Hello friends, how are you doing today? In the last video, we talked about uh, well architected frameworks, all the seven pillars of well architected frameworks, starting from the operational excellence, observability, reliability, sustainability, cost optimization, performance, and generate AI. Right? So you might have got a good idea about uh, the seven pillars of a well architected framework. And in this video, I just wanted to pick uh, the first pillar, operational excellence, and want to share the details about how this has been evolved from the legacy world to the current world and how we can use this uh, operational excellence pillar while designing or architecting our system and what benefit that we are going to get out of it, all those things we are going to talk in this video. And uh, I'm going to uh, tell one disclaimer here and you are not going to learn anything about the operational excellence pillar as the documentation provided by your favorite cloud service provider. For those uh, framework and structures, you uh, have to go to your uh, favorite cloud service provider, if it is IBM or AWS or Azure or Google, Google Cloud, go ahead and, and look for the documentation about the operational excellence pillar and learn about it. But here, I'm gonna talk about how this operational excellence has got evolved from the legacy world to the current world and how it transitioned to the cloud era and how it is being used in the generative AI world. Okay, and these are all the practical scenarios and you can explore in your daily life and see how this has been used in your daily work as a solution architect, okay? Okay, let's uh, talk about how it got evolved, right? When it comes to operational excellence, you must keep in mind that your applications operations and your platforms operations and your infrastructures operations. So operations, I mean the function to perform, right? In case if you are having an application, if that application is uh, e-commerce application and uh, it is uh, used for the e-commerce uh, uh, customers to place the order and uh, check out the order, all those steps, you must keep your application in operationalized way. That means your application should be performing its core function without any dependency with the developers or manual tasks. tasks. And also, and when you are setting up the platform, your platform should perform and help your applications to run fine without any interruptions. And similarly, if it is a, an infrastructure where your platform runs, your infrastructure must be operationalized with the perfect scripts and mechanisms or functions so that your infrastructure works as expected. And this is called operationalization in simple terms. And if you take uh, the legacy application and if you go back to your olden days, how these uh, legacy applications were operationalized, it would be a little different. Uh, you would be doing a lot of manual tasks. For example, if you had a Java application and uh, you plan to deploy that application in a, a platform, what you would do in olden days, you would request uh, your uh, system admin or infrastructure folks to set up the infrastructure and they go and provision a machine and uh, it would take um, weeks and months of time to set up the infrastructure. On top of that, uh, you would be asking your um, platform engineers to go and set up the platform for your application to run. Either it is a WebSphere or WebLogic or Tomcat, whatever the platform of your choice. And once that is done, you would be asking your application team to make sure that uh, the platforms are set up fine and you can put your application in the manual way to deploy it and run it. And some uh, of you might have uh, done this type of uh, jobs in olden days, and uh, you would be depending on a lot of uh, people to do this activity. And also, in case if you want to operate slice uh, or automate one of the functions in your applications, you would be writing a lot of codes and scripts to do that, right? That is olden days. And uh, now in the cloud era, what happened, you uh, plan to migrate your application to the public cloud service providers or any of your favorite cloud service providers. And what happened there, you don't need to depend on any of the system admins and you would not be waiting weeks and months of time to set up the infrastructure and platform for your application to run fine, right? So what happened in the public cloud uh, era? All the scripts which are needed to set up your infrastructure and platform are already available with the um, powerful mechanisms and powerful microservice architecture in the form of services, right? So suppose if you want to deploy your um, EAR file, what you do currently in the public cloud uh, era, 
you are just um, pulling the uh, EIR, EIR file or JAR file and use one of the services to deploy it in your favorite infrastructure or platform, right? The provisioning of infrastructure and platform made very simple compared to the legacy way of operationalizing your application. So that is the evolution from the legacy world to the public world, right? So what is the benefit over here? Your application uh, setup has been very simple and you were able to fail quickly, learn and deploy it, right? That is the beauty of operational pillar here. And in your olden days, if you fail, it is very difficult to set up the environment It would take another couple of weeks and months time to set up the infrastructure and platform for your applications to run, right? In the cloud era, the operation pillar take care of your quickly failing and learning from the failure and provision the infrastructure in seconds and then set up your platform and applications to run fine in the public cloud. That is the beauty of operation pillar. So you can experiment a lot and you can set up your infrastructure and platform by your own. And also for configuring, for example, if you take a pipeline setup in your legacy world, what happened, you would be sitting and writing lines and lines of codes in Jenkins and create your own pipeline setup and make sure that that pipeline triggers properly and you do all the manual work of triggering it out. And you had always one person to look for the monitoring um, and also the automation of your scripts. But in cloud, what happens? You just build your code and you use the services like code commit and code config and for deployment, there will be a service and for monitoring, there is a separate service. And all you need to do is just build the code and leave it to the public cloud service providers and use the proper services to operationalize your application, right? That is the cloud era way of doing it. So what you do normally, if you are planning to do the day one, day two, and day zero operations, and you will be doing with the help of the services available in the public cloud service providers, right? That's what happening in the current cloud world. So uh, what else you do in case of uh, monitoring your application, you would be like uh, spinning up one service and it will go and monitor your application performance and resource utilization. Uh, so you come to know about how application is performing, how it is reacting or responding to the request. And uh, when it comes to the resource consumption, how many um, instances are being used, how much memory CPU are being used, all these operational works are done using one single service in public cloud era, right? So that is the beauty of uh, evolution from legacy to public cloud in terms of operational pillar. And you would be exploring all the options to monitor and also in terms of security aspect, how we can monitor your network flow. All those can be achieved with the help of services in public cloud service world, right? So now if we come to your contemporary world where you see everything is tied up with generative AI, right? So how the operation pillar is infused with generative AI and what are all the benefits as developer you are getting, as a platform solution architect you are getting, and as a infrastructure solution architect you are getting with the help of injecting this generative AI in the operations builder. So in the contemporary world, what's happening, you evaluated from the legacy to public cloud era with the help of this microservices architecture and you are able to spin up a couple of services to operationalize your application platform and infrastructure. Now you have the luxury of integrating this infrastructure or platform or your application with generative AI. So what will happen when operational pillar and generative AI pillar are infused? What the, the magic will happen here? So let's say you are setting up your applications to run in a public cloud and you used a couple of services to monitor and configure and are using um, the CloudFormation template or Terraform template or whatever the template you are using to set up the infrastructure or provision the infrastructure. When you combine this work of operationalization or operational pillar excellence with Generative AI, the Generative AI will learn all these configurations and it uh, reads your data, the performance uh, efficiency of your application, the operationalization of your platform and infrastructure provisioning details, 
all these data are fed into generative ai so that it learns those data and it will produce a, an optimized output and use those you can take those optimized output and use it back to your infrastructure or platform and application to make it perform better than before so that is the power of generative ai in the operations pillar and also let's say like you are doing the day zero and day one day two operations um, as provider as asked by the cloud service provider you would be doing a lot of works to do that work and uh, now you can integrate all the works that you performed for this day zero day one and day two and integrate this generative ai uh, tool to read those works whatever you have done so far and uh, train your generative ai with this rich amount of data that is going to be helping your application platform and infrastructure in the operations way so that complete data would be fed into the generative ai and the generative ai will learn those data keep learning those data uh, for example you are uh, migrating one application today and setting up all the services required for to operationalize your application platform and infrastructure and uh, that data will be fed into the in generative ai tools and technologies and next day you will be doing some other application and you will be doing this a little different uh, for configuring and setting up those applications in your cloud service provider and those data will be fed into generative ai to learn similarly in your organization if your thousands of applications are migrated to the cloud you would be performing all the operations as planned as required by the cloud service provider and feeding those data to this generative ai to learn so what will happen um, down the line after 6 months to 1 year this generative ai would learn those data and prepare an output that is going to be an optimized output for setting up your infrastructure platform and application to run so this way what will happen your organization will start saving a lot of money for example in your cloud service um, provider if you are just spinning up and running some of the services every service uh, transaction cost is added to your budget right so and you have to pay those uh, as the form of billing so uh, when it comes to this generative ai what will happen it will micro monitor it will learn the data whatever you provided and it will produce an output uh, configuration details if you use that configuration details to provide your infrastructure platform or application your organization will save a lot of money because the generative ai has the ability to produce an optimized output that output can be used to operationalize your application platform and uh, infrastructure so this is how the operation pillar can be infused with the, the generative ai and you can reap the benefit out of uh, the infusion of operational excellence pillar with generative ai pillar okay uh, there are a lot of uh, practical use cases available we can talk in detail about that and uh, also if you have any experience in integrating this operational excellence pillar with generative ai put your comments in the comments box below we can talk and discuss more about it and if you like this video give a thumbs up and share it to your friends so that they will also get benefit out of it take care bye